so i think yesterday we saw about the different functions which are there in the calculated field like we saw yesterday it's going to be like either i can have a numeric field a text field text field i gave you an exam numeric field we've seen right now and the text field i gave an example about how you can concatenate names because a person could have first name last name title etc and when you display your name in your profile say for example carol lee is mentioned over here certain people especially in uk may have some suffixes carol lee one carol lee two especially in europe you may have carol lee one two three surnames and somebody else could have prefixes prefixes could be something like mr if the organization wants to put in your mr doctor professor whatever it is you can have that over there and certain other people may have some other suffixes as well senior junior whatever all those things are possible especially in you especially in uk or europe plus southeast asia some of the countries in east asia china japan say may have some suffixes as well so if you want to display that this particular name field that you see over here is built based on how i'm setting this up over here and it's a concatenated text field which is delivered by workday and it is a concatenation based on prefix first name last name suffixes etc and again this is a configuration which is available how i can just maintain this as well along with your employee id and this is again a calculated field which is delivered by workday if you want to check it you can check it it is called as display name and it's a calculated field by itself which is going to concatenate all of these values and there is a page which you can use to configure this particular value which is available in the tenant settings which we'll see towards the end because that's all i have saved it as something like nice to have stuff if we have the time i can just show you some of the options for tenant level settings as well all right so this field is called as display name all right display name is going to display is going to give you the name of a person based on how i want to configure it and this is an example of a text concatenation field clear clear on this and again apart from this i can also do formatting of a date formatting of a number text etc formatting of a date a simple example is say if you are born say today the 4th of october 2023 in some of the government organizations or educational based organization let's take an example if you are going to be building tomorrow a work day implementation system for an education based organization something like a college or a school if you are going to retire and if your date of birth say is happens to be the 4th of october you will be requested to be in service till the end of this particular academic period which could be towards the end of this year right or the end of the month for example in india your retirement date is usually the last working day of the month all right that is about it so if you want to do that you can use a format date option to pick the last day of the month year if you want to have it at a different period an academic period payroll period whatever you want you can do all that using format date clear these are different options which we have in text and organizations this is like look up in the organization so this we will see as a part of lra function so simply put like i said who is going to be the hr coordinator who is going to be the hr partner who is going to be the manager in my organization i look up in the ex in the workers organization roles level that's what this particular information does next date field we also already saw increment decrement if i want to build a date if i want to have a constant date i can have all of those options available boolean it's going to be either true or false if a condition is met it is going to say true otherwise it's going to be false for example if a person is going to be we are going to have a field which is going to say whether a person is 18 years or above it's going to return either yes or no that's it and instance related aggregates all those things and we'll just look at a once we get into lookup related values
all right clear on the values that we've seen over here how this does probably a recap of whatever we did but just want to explain it in a little bit more granular level all right clear any other questions before we get into the next topics all right so the next one that we see over here is creation of a calculated field which we just saw in the demo as well so the first step i need to enter my name like i said always from this point of time onwards create a name or any object that you create not only a calculated field even if you're going to be creating a rule use a name which is meaningful which is as per the nomenclature which i've just shared with you it should be like rn underscore core underscore if it is going to be for a specific or cf for calculated field and if i'm going to be creating something like by weekly salary my field name will look like rn underscore core underscore cf and underscore i will say by weekly salary it is going to be really really useful for you in the future as well be you to create a calculated field or a rule or whatever you create create a meaningful object all right next the business object you need to choose the business object on which you are going to be creating that particular calc field next the function so that is how you create a calculated field the basic information that you require to create a calculated field so this is a screen that is talking about the first the field name then the business object then the functionality that i am trying to build in this particular object or calculated field clear the next thing is going to be the calculation tab say for example if i'm going to be building over here say as rn underscore cf underscore core and then i see p simple sample field i'm just putting it on worker and then i'm just putting a function over here say something like arithmetic that's it simple over here i'm just putting a pay field and what you see next is all your calculation information so what is the calculation that i want to do that's what i mentioned in my calculation tab and the third tab we call it as additional information tab so this is more around the security and categorization parts so if i want to secure this by certain things how do i do it whether it should be secured to only certain business objects rules how do i want to do it or integrations how i actually want to secure the usage of this for now just choose only authorized usage don't or default usage default areas don't choose anything else because this default areas is going to be from the business object say if i'm going to give default areas this is going to inherit all the permissions from my business object level whatever is available in the configuration of my business object it is going to pick the security over there for now just choose only this don't choose anything else apart from default areas and here again if i want to give a description to my calculated field i can give a description value over here as well clear any questions here and again and for now leave the reference id's part that is going to be the last topic that we will deal in this particular session because every object will have a reference id and we don't have any usage apart from apart from migration part all right and like i said we have like one is the initial information next is going to be the calculation tab and then we have what is called as the additional information tab where we are going to give all the security information and then the calculation tab i'm going to be mentioning what is the data that it's going to be extracting and how all right clear on this when you do not want to use it anywhere you mark it as dnu all right uh, inactivating is uh, okay let me i just didn't want to get into that nitty gritty details but let me just tell you that now itself so that it's going to clear the air around that question 
see when you say in inactivating is you are inactivating it completely within the system so that you will not even be getting that particular field or object in any new rule that you are going to create whereas dnu you will get that particular object in your usage but you are just telling the user to not use it because i've marked it as dnu because this could have reference in my existing rules calculations where it is still running where it is still running right where it is still being used i'm still having the references for that and it's still running fine i'm saying do not use it in the future that is number 1 and number 2 usage any object that i have marked it as dnu will not be carried forward as a part of my migration migration is like when i am going to be migrating some changes from my test environment to my production environment if i am going to mark an instance as dnu that object will not be migrated it will be excluded and those are the two key differences between inactivating and dnu hope it makes sense for you clear on this what exactly a dnu does because i am not restricting the object but i'm just saying that do not use it and it will not be carried forward to my next instance in my tenant migration say from a test instance if i want to migrate it to my production tenant any dnu object will not be migrated it will be automatically excluded in my migration or in my migration methodology all right since we have not seen that but i've just trying to give you a trivia information over there and even if in your interviews if they ask you what exactly is a dnu just tell them this one you are instructing the user not to use it even though you are not removing all the references and the second thing it is not going to be part of your tenant migrations it's not going to be it's going to be automatically excluded in your tenant migration so if they ask you what is a dnu these are the two common things that you need to note it's not going to be migrated it is like completely inactivated audit trail also it will show you that inactivating means that field is going to be inactivated that's it it's going to say inactive it's not going to be deleted and in your audit log it is going to say inactivated say on the 3rd of october that's what it's going to say it's not going to show anything else clear it's going to say this is inactivated and you can reactivate it at any any point of a time and again when you reactivate something you need to ensure that all the references of that particular object are removed before inactivating it before you inactivate an object you need to ensure that its references say this calc field is used in 10 different rules i need to ensure that the ref rule references are removed that is a criteria which we have as a part of inactivation otherwise those rules will error out saying that invalid object is being referenced in your source field or in your value column that's an error that will throw up clear on that all right so let's move on to the next like i said about naming convention so again the naming convention whatever we talked about is available over here like i said first it should be the company and then we say calc field for cf if you are going to create a condition rule we say cr and based on any other object that you create use something which is going to be synonymous to it here i've used cf for calculation field i can use cr for condition rule and whatever it is and here rpt is for reporting functional area reporting functional area i'm going to use it only for reporting functional area so that is why in this example it is given as rpt if you are going to use it for core say it as core for benefits say it as ben or bn as per whatever your organization policies are going to be and then if it is going to be for comp you say comp or whatever it is similarly you give it for the functional area that you are going to use next give the meaningful name that the field is going to be looking up or the is going to use so that 
when you retrieve this particular field name or this particular object name in other place it will be easy for you to fetch it and that is the reason why we are just insisting that you use proper naming conventions clear on this and this is very very important and i did not want i was not very much focused about the naming conventions till now whether when you created the rules or others because we did not see the functional area till now now that we have seen functional area last week any object that you create from now onwards should be with the proper naming convention right so just make a note of it it should have the appropriate naming convention otherwise it's going to be rejected just have it in your mind because when i review any migration if it is not in the proper naming convention that object will not get migrated to the next instance because these are certain rules which is always available in any support project or implementation project that you are going to be if proper naming conventions are not there it's going to be automatically rejected by your system administrator it will not go through to the next instance that's how it works clear any questions on naming conventions and if you are creating a object along with gitika please ensure that it is appropriate all right and i think this particular activity we've already done it yesterday itself next existing calculated fields if you want to locate an existing calculator field this is the place where you would be looking and this is the specific reports and task that you have over there so today i i think i've already shared this particular material with you yesterday did you get the material across i think i had shared quite a few materials including the reports plus calculated fields did you get this particular uh, material that we are seeing right now the same deck is what i shared with you guys did you get it all right okay the next thing that i just want you to do is today you i want you all to go through all of these all of these tasks which are available all calculated fields report business object detail report this is very very important this is what i think i showed you the other day as well in any business object be it worker worker compensation what are the different fields that are available yesterday we saw this particular report about single instance multi instance and all the other fields as well so i want you to go through all of these tasks today and please try to understand one or more fields which are available and what is the functionality of each and every field all right and this one is again maintain calculated fields report it is going to give all the calculated fields which are available in the system since this is a training tenant you may find thousands of calculated fields created on different business objects so today if you get a chance just try to go through this particular report and find out what are the other calculated fields which are already created by other trainees and try to find what is the calculation and how they have used it all right and tomorrow i will show you some more complex calculations but before that i would want you to just go through this particular report once why i am telling you is i can show it easily but i just want you to go through one of these reports and try to understand how a real world calculated field is going to be built or is built already so it's going to give you a lot of inputs and insights about it all right that's what this particular report is going to be and today just try to find out at least two or three other calculated fields other trainees have created and if you want to clone or create copy the same field okay let me do one thing i will just show you a small field over here and i'll give you one option as well maintain calculated fields okay so 
if you see for different business objects they've created so many of them let me pick the common one which we see which is for worker field in the view calculated field it should show up it should show up in the view calculated field option aren't you seeing it okay. and why i wanted to show this across to you is so we have so many different fields which are created over here what i want you to do is you can pick at least a couple if you can do more than one if you can do five or 10 fields it's going to give you a really really strong base foundation for the reporting and everything as well so what i would rather suggest is i'm just randomly picking a field over here which is built on the contingent worker business object and it is called as current date plus 30 so they pick the current date over here and they are trying to find the difference between the current date and the current date plus 30 which is obviously going to see give the result as 30 and if i want to have the result in months years whatever it is don't ask me why they have done it in this way instead they could give a direct field like constant field like 30 but they've just used it for some purpose somebody has done this over here that's it so just understand that on loan don't go to the nuances of this field and logic and everything what i would rather say is you can pick a field and if i want to clone that particular field what i do is i pick randomly any field go to the calculated field options and say copy all right i can say copy whereby what will happen is the same field the calculations everything i can copy it and play around with this so what i would rather suggest is pick some random field which you might feel complex or something of your interest and then say copy calc field and try to play around with these values instead of say value returned here is 30 days i can say month which is going to be one month or if i want to have the same thing in hours what is the value that i need to do of course you're going to get some error find out what this particular error is it says the field name is required so i'm just going to give test underscore rn underscore one i'm just giving ignore the nomenclature for now just giving a sample value in order for you to understand i'm giving the value name and in hours so what is going to be 30 hours into 24 it's going to give me a value of 720 similarly play around with this that is the objective of this particular thing play around with calculated fields over here that's what i want you to effectively do today anything pick anything you could have management level you could have fields like which is a field which is going to pick the managers 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 manager l3 l4 level managers or somebody a, a direct or an indirect reportees everything is possible using calculated fields just look at what exactly it is doing and then you will be able to understand it clear on this that is the objective that i want you all to do today try to pick one or more of the calculated fields from your maintain calculated fields report and find out what exactly are the fields that other people have created explore it copy it play around with it don't play around with the ones that they have already created if you want to play around with them copy it create your own version and then do it clear on this all right let's move on to the next one i will ask the support to share this particular deck across with you today so hopefully another hours time you should have this particular deck with you and you can go through all the options all the tasks which are available here so go through them and come out with any questions that you have and try to build more calculated fields over here all right let's see activity over here where exactly like i said where exactly are we going to use the calculator fields number 1 we are going to be using it in reports which you are going to be seeing next or in your business process rules common places where i would use it these are the common places where i would use it so i would use it either in my reports or in my business process rules i've already taught you about how to use it in business process rules next we are going to be seeing about reports and getika by the way the field that you created i want you to use it right now we are going to be seeing a very very small report right now next and uh, okay let's get to that next now all right 
one small thing that you need to note over here is called as performance calculations so if you have some calculated fields which are going to do some wacky wacky calculations or if you're going to have multiple step level derived nested calculated fields obviously it is going to take a lot of time so you should be mindful about how my calculated fields are built and also the performance parameters so if you are going to build something like derived derived nested derived nested derived nested derived three four levels be very mindful about how long that it takes which is a common database problem which we always have in hand all right we will again revisit this when we go to reports all right but for now what i want to do is the last topic that i want to touch today is it is what is called as report creation so we've seen about calculated fields i'm just going to give you a very very small i'm not going to take more than five minutes of time i'm going to only introduce how to create reports and we are going to be using the field which Gitika created and for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to create report all right i'm going to say create custom report and i want you to do the same thing right now if you're doing it along with me just try to do it and i'm going to say rn rpt test report that's it and give the report type as simple give it as a simple straightforward report there are other types of reports also available i'm only going to introduce reports today and then for now check this as optimized for performance and next let this be checked don't uncheck this and the work data source as worker you will get multiple options for workers but choose workers for hcm reporting why just go to this particular description so it says accesses the worker as its primary business object and returns one row per worker which means it is going to be a single instance and includes all active and terminated workers and for all active workers it is going to report the latest date as on current date and for terminated workers whatever was the instance of the worker as on their last working date it's going to return that specific value so choose the data source as workers for hcm reporting click on okay all right once you click on okay you're going to get the report name and you're going to get the data source as well and my data source filter even though this particular data source is going to contain terminated as well as uh, terminated as well as uh, active workers but i am choosing in the filter over here this is a default filter which i can use to filter data from my data source and i'm going to say only active workers we do have other options over here and you cannot customize this it is only those filters which are available in a data source and then i have like all employees terminated workers all workers there is a difference between the two but for now choose only active workers as my data source and over here in my primary business object is chosen as worker choose it over here as worker do not change this and in my field give it as worker give it as worker all right so this is going to give my worker detail information so carly is a worker it is going to give worker next i'm going to use gitika's field name gitika what was the field name that you created are visible over here and i can overwrite here okay uh, this particular column in my report will show us whatever name i've given here i am just going to override it as pf calc 
it's just an example and what i'm going to do is because this is going to return hundreds and hundreds and thousands of values i'm just going to give a filter just like what we give as a filter in excel criteria so i'm going to say i'm going to have my report only pick values of those employees who were hired say post post 11 greater than or equal to and i'm going to give a specific value over here as 112023 cust okay see custom reports are some reports that you are going to create and there is also something called as standard report which is nothing but work day delivered reports work day yeah. delivered reports are called as standard reports and the ones that you are going to create like you said out of the box are all custom reports only right clear you can create any reports but for now and create today i want you to create reports only on this particular configuration that i have showed you and use your own okay. calculated fields that you have created and apart from that if you want to also use any of the other fields which are available go ahead and use it because i want you to explore okay. all the fields which are available explore it either other people's custom fields or your own custom fields or delivered fields use anything that you want my objective is i was this is a very simple report that i have created we do have other types complex ones matrix and other types of groupings just like what you see in your excel we can do groupings we can do matrix everything but for now i want you to only run a simple report because i want you to correlate your calculated fields and then your report just to give you an example as what it is and today as an activity i want you to try it and the report that i have created right now is a very very simple i want to look at the pf calculation for them plus whatever report i have created with their worker details that is all i need to do and i've given a filter over here which is going to say only those employees who are hired after 112023 this is up to your mercy i am leaving it to you if you want to pick only employees who is who are working out of us who is reporting to caroli who is not reporting to caroli or who are already terminated you can do anything only thing is the data source filter which is available if you want to pick terminated workers now i've given it as all active workers go ahead and explore that as well if you want to pick terminated workers there are appropriate data source filters to pick only terminated workers go around and play with it all right go around go around, go ahead and play around with this particular topic today i am only trying to inculcate some interest in you and i will deep dive into this tomorrow again all right but for now today once you create those calculated fields go ahead and use it in your reports and see what it is doing now i'm going to go ahead and run this particular report just ignore this for now i'm not going to give anything over here and it's going to give all my workers who were hired post a specific date and i have 668 workers who are there and it is possible that for some of them my calculation is incorrect and they do not have a values and i need to look into that calculation or this particular workers compensation information itself all right let me just see if the filter criteria has some other value i can sort it just like what i do it in my excel uh, okay it doesn't have any other value let's me do one thing let me pick let me i want to see some meaningful information in my report so i'm just adding a couple of more information i'm going to add date of birth so i'm just going to click on plus twice apart from the field that kritika has already created i am going to give hire date oh i think i picked the wrong one what's the right one i will show some meaningful information to you and then i'll come to you kritika i'm picking the date of birth 
of this particular person like i said so many different fields are available you can pick and choose the one that you want all right now i've edited this particular report and i'm rerunning my report right now so so in order to rerun this report you can come to this particular report either you will see a run over here or if you want to run it again go to the related actions of this particular report custom report run so either if you have the run button over here you will be able to do it otherwise go to custom report and click run all right and leave all those prompt options we call these as prompt options for now ignore this completely ignore this all right why i'm saying is ignore this for now i haven't taught you that but if you want to explore it you can explore it but we'll deep dive into it tomorrow so the hire date whoever was hired after 1 1 2023 is what i have over here if i want to check if my report is functioning properly i can order it based on higher date all right and remember this is a dd mmyy and not the mmddyy which is in us all right and if you want to format it you can format this in an american format as well the way you want it and data worth for some folks it is available for the rest of them i guess it is not available probably it is not maintained in the system that is why you don't see it over here